How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the ZooMed social media account. Uh, today I'm joined by Forrest Galante, a wildlife biologist with an affinity for reptiles who needs little introduction, but is most renowned for the uncovering of evidence leading to the rediscovery of eight species of various animals previously thought to be extinct. Welcome Forrest, excited for you to join us. I'm really lucky, I live down the road from ZooMed, just an hour and a half away. I love these guys. I've had the pleasure of using their products since I was a little kid. And uh, recently we walked around the ZooMed facility for a YouTube video, we built a chameleon cage together. So yeah, so you wanna tell us what we're, what we're building today? The very first reptile that I ever collected and kept when I moved to the United States. I felt so lost. I came from Africa where we had all these crazy animals and I drove down to the desert in Palm Springs to go herping and I found a rosy boa, one of only two native boa species to North America. So I was so ecstatic. But the very first rosy boa I ever found had a missing tail and a big, bloody, terrible wound, like a raccoon had come in and ripped off her tail or something. And so I, I had my fishing license and I collected that rosy boa, drove it all the way back to Santa Barbara where I lived and like, debrided all the rotten flesh and things like that and fixed her up. And I've had that snake for nearly 20 years now and she needs a really cool place to live. So we're gonna build a rosy boa desert habitat. Yeah, to commemorate it. Yeah, so let's get started. Well, you're gonna have to talk about the various products and what they do. Yeah, so this is a Repti Sand. We have a couple different colors. We got it in red and white. Um, I like the red. I'm a big fan of the red. It looks yeah. like that Australian outback. Totally, totally. And it also kind of looks like some, some of the more orange rocks in the desert as well. You know what I like? I like when a habitat has levels. Yeah. So I think what we got to do, and you tell me, you're the expert, how do we build up like a level for it? So I would definitely recommend just using various pieces of wood. I would okay, start. So let's get some yeah, wood. Yeah, let's get started. Let's try it. Backfill it maybe? Yeah. We can grab some dirt or some repti soil. Rep to soil. Everything's rep to I like it. <laughs> All right, you do it. I'm watching. All right, this is a lot of pressure here. Don't mess up. I know, I gotta keep the nice orange sand all, all clean. There you go. That looks good, though. I kind of like the two-tone, actually. Right? It's natural. So you grew up in Zimbabwe, from what I understand. That's right. Did you grow up kind of catching reptiles out there, too? I had 14 fish tanks and terrariums in my bedroom as a kid, mm -hmm. and not one of them looked half as good as this one does already. They were terrible. We used to make them ourselves on the farm with, mm -hmm. out of plywood, yeah. you know, with a glass front and stuff like that. They were probably terrible for the animal, all things considered. Didn't breathe enough, all of that. But you know what? Didn't lose too many and uh, grew up with a ton of tanks and terrariums what and loved it. What were some of the species that you kind of grew up catching? It all started with brown house snakes. In Zimbabwe, brown house snakes are a very common snake. They're like a king snake in California or a corn snake in the southeast. So I had a bunch of brown house snakes. And then I graduated, I had African rock pythons. Uh, I went all the way up to rhombic night adders, which is a venomous little snake. And one escaped and my mom found it on her pillow in her bedroom and she's like, that's it, no more venomous snakes. So that was the last venomous snake I was ever allowed to keep and I was probably 12 at that time. I've never had a venomous snake since. But I had tortoises, I had fish, I did, I did all of it. The fish were a big thing for me. I used to fly all over Southern Africa uh, with my family who ran safaris, so that's why we were flying everywhere, and collect fish from all different river systems and put them into my bedroom. But what else do we need to do? So we got a level now, I like yeah, that, that's exactly. cool. Grapewood, this yeah, is Mapani, right? Stuff, yeah. Or this Grapewood. Well, that. oh, that's kind of nice though, I kind of like that guy. So you were involved with the kind of the rediscovery of eight previously thought to be extinct species. That's right. Which of those were, were reptiles? Only two of them were reptiles. The Fernandina Island tortoise, which mm -hmm. was a probably our most notable one. It's the rarest animal in the world. There's still only one specimen, which is her name's Fern. And then the other is the Rio Apoporus caiman. And that was really cool. That one wasn't really extinct so long as it had just been missing right. for a long time because nobody had been into the region. But both of those were super, super awesome expeditions and yielded pretty exciting results. All right, I like that. That looks nice. It's too clean though. We got to make it less clean. We got to make it look like nature, Jack. What are we going to do here? So a lot of the times, you know, obviously you'll get a lot of dead leaf litter. Oh, there you go. Leaf, leaf litter. litter. That's nice. Crumple that Snakes up. Snakes will like that. So are you crushing this usually? Yeah, what are you, you doing? can crush it. Obviously in nature it'll degrade. Oh man, it feels so criminal. You got <laughs> this like beautiful habitat and then you're crushing up all the dirt on top of it. See, I'm like too organized. I like the leaves a certain way. Oh my God, you're just messing up the whole habitat. <laughs> Is this hurting your soul for A little bit, it was so tidy. <laughs> All right, so one thing that, so we need a couple things in here, right? right. One, the rosy bows need somewhere to get some water. Right. So what do you got for that? And then we need, we need a hiding area, I would say. What do you think, is that too much? Oh. No, you like it? I like it. All right, we're climbing zones over there. There's something up the back. Oh, well, here we go. There's a good hiding area. Look at that, right? 
little cork round. There's our winner right there. All right, so I like this one, I'll tell you why. It's got enough space that the rosy boa can go in there, but it's not so tight that I can never get her out because that's one of the things. She likes to dig into these things and go, uh -uh, I'm not coming out. So Forrest, you know, I kind of started doing a little bit of herping this past year. It can kind of be demoralizing sometimes, you know? Oh, it's you awful. You go out, it's super awful. determined, you're excited. You think but you're gonna find all these things, and then, then you, you find nothing. You find absolutely nothing. <laughs> and I'm just looking for common reptile species. How do you deal with finding supposedly extinct species? How do you deal with the mental game of that? It's a good question. You have to enjoy the journey and not the destination, right? And that's a big part of it for me and my team is putting in the hours to look for something and enjoying the journey the whole time. Whether you find it or not is, it's not trivial, but it's just something that, it's a nice byproduct when you find something and everything else you see. I think that's the key to enjoying being outdoors and being in the wilderness. Learning about the plants, learning about the soil, learning about the rocks. It's not just about that target species. That way when you do find the target species, it makes it all that much sweeter. Look how good that's looking. Did we put, and we got the round in yeah, there? Yeah, we got the round in there. It's pretty good. You know what, I think we need a little green in that front corner. All right, well, Jack, there we go. I'm stoked. This looks way better than the rosy bow build I have at home, that's for sure. I've learned a lot. Rule of thirds, not too much symmetry. Make it messy. That's the main thing I'm taking away. Yeah, make it messy. And one last thing for you, we got some rapid fire questions. Okay, you ready? Shoot. Yeah, hit me. All right, favorite species that you keep? Snake neck turtles. Awesome. Dream species to keep? Gariel. Gariel? Yep. Nobody's, nobody's <laughs> keeping them, but that's a, that would be my dream species. If you could find any reptile in the wild, what would it be? The La Palma Island giant lizard. Hasn't been seen in 70 years. Wow, I don't even know what that is. So I'll have to do some research after this. Favorite species of reptile to find locally to you? California mountain king snake. Glam propelled sonata. Have you found one yet? I know you're Not on a mission. Not yet. I did find my Cali king Good. the night after you came to Zoom. No way. Yeah, oh, you finally. said you were on the hunt. Yeah. Good. And who's caught more reptiles around the house? You or Rhodes? Oh, definitely Rhodes. <laughs> no, there's probably 12 lizards in his bedroom right now that I don't know about. He's the, wor <laughs> he's the worst. All right, and finally, Forrest, thank you so much for joining us. One last question. Is there anything else that you want people to know about you? Nothing about me, but I will say this. If you guys keep reptiles at home, if you keep almost anything at home, in my opinion, don't let the other people at the show here, the ZooMed makes the best stuff. It's not even close. I mean, I absolutely love their stuff. Build something like this in under 10 minutes, which is amazing. It's got all the stuff to make your animal happy. I appreciate the support from you guys and always sending product and uh, just keep doing what you're doing, making animals happy. Hell yeah, dude. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, buddy.